disassembled all the parts from what you saw in part two. Uh, normally I would have already had, I would have already done some of the enamel washes and liner on the runners before uh, assembling it. But in this case, I wanted to see it clean built first before I do the details. So I've taken all the parts, you know, that I could apart, uh, kept a few together where I thought they should stay. And then I'm just gonna start with some washes and then uh, doing some uh, Gundam marker detailing. And uh, we'll see what we can get out of this. Uh, probably bring out some powders from the Tamiya uh, weathering line too. And then I'll eventually seal all this with uh, you a nice flat top coat. Now I'm not really gonna do any chipping on this seeing as it's a huge spacecraft and those kind of chips would be somewhat unrealistic, but I will leave some grime and you know, like soot and certain areas around the engine components all get all nasty. All right, so I've talked about previously what the goal of these videos are, and this was uh, the other kit that I did uh, using these same techniques. Um, so you see here, this is just the raw plastic, um, and I would paint it on. This is some chipping with acrylic, but I did some brown washes. Um, and leaving them in the stain and just wiping off the excess. So this is just the actual plastic of the kit. Uh, there's a little dry brush and some of the metallics, but for the most part, this is all raw plastic. That's the white, you know, uh, plastic coming through. Gray with a little bit of dry brush. You see most of the gray, uh, a little bit of paint in there with the brass. And then, you know, hand chipped, hand painting chips right there. And then the rest of that is just brown wash that I let, you know, stain, just like what we're doing right here. So that's the goal, is to treat it like this kit. And uh, we'll eventually get it looking pretty cool, and uh, I think it'll look great. All right. Okay, so most of the washes that I'm going to use here um, are what you have in front of you. So. What I would start with uh, would just be using some of the liners from Tamiya. Uh, black might be a little too dark for this gray, but in certain areas like the red and brown and the darker grays, this might pop a little bit better. And it also may be good to enhance some really deep areas after the fact. So I'll use that sparingly. And then the dark brown I like too because it creates kind of a little stainy brown wash in the dark areas. So I want to use some of this. I can use some of this for shading uh, after I've got my main washes in. And then the dark gray, um, I really like on white and really light gray parts because it ends up being um, pretty dark, but not as dark as the black. So it doesn't um, it doesn't distract or make things look too uh, dark, but it gives that depth that you want in like white or light gray uh, parts. So the main wash I'm going to be putting all of the parts through is the Starship wash from Mig. It's just, it's exactly the wash you're thinking of. It's, you know, it's a Star Wars uh, type effect wash over the gray parts. So that's what I'm gonna use now uh, on all the parts first, let that dry, and then I'll buff it off, and then I'll start coming in with my secondary liners and secondary weathering um, color to get, you know, extra, extra effect out of it. And then once all the washes are down and dry, then I will come in with my, um, we'll come in with my Gundam markers and detailing parts and then it will be, yeah, then we'll move on. So what I, what I also use to thin down and clean them though, are using between this and just regular odorless mineral spirits. This will help clean up all these thinners and the the odorless is a little less harsh. Um, some people use lighter fluid or naphtha. Uh, I don't use either of those. Well, naphtha and lighter fluid are the exact, pretty much exactly the same thing. I don't like using them because I use them for work and chemicals and they just have, uh, I've gotten sour about them. I just don't like having them around me. They're not great for you to get on your skin. None of these things are. I just can't handle naphtha anymore. But odorless mineral spirits, We'll get you where you need to be. I usually keep them in little bottles like this so I can just easily squeeze them again. These are on my Amazon list as well. Little metal tips. Nice little bottles for dripping out. All right. They're gonna be the main uh, painting presses I'm gonna use. Uh, since this is just mostly just a wash, 
build, I'm not gonna worry about precision brushes too much, but what I'll do is I have, um, you know, I'll take a fan brush, um, pretty much any kind of do, but I'll show you what I got here. Uh, it's nice and stiff, it'll help with blending down some of the streaking or moving product around because it's got kind of a, you can kind of do a, you know, a wide berth of it, a wide, wide movement across and use the edges, still a sharp points to blend. Uh, then for really erratic movements, I have some really jacked up brushes here that'll just help with those random streaks and then I can apply with those too. So it's really hard to see any of those anymore, but they look like they're all filbert grainers, pointed filbert, you know, basically grainer. I got, yeah, they're all worn out, so one eighth and, uh, that's a lot of figuring that out, but filberts and grainers are what I like to use. And then just sticking some standard. You know, these are both these are both Tamiya, but really just a fine point and a flat brush help blend things around. And then I'll use um, just some over the, you know, cheapo. Uh, pointed well ink pens for throwing in the liner if I need precision. So I'll dip this into the liner and then I'll be able to just do precision lining. It won't be big, big puddles everywhere. I can just do a little bit. So if I just want to get around a rivet or get into a small crevice with a different color, I can use these. And uh, yeah. And then some ceramic sauce dishes for paint. They really like to clean out easily. Not a lot messes with them. Um, any kind will do. I like these because they cheaper come in a pack. These are nice, but then you gotta clean out each one, and you know, it's up to you. But. All right, materials for this part. Uh, I just have some. We're not going to use all of them here. But these are the ones I like to bring out for most of the weathering. So this is a good uh, soft upholstery foam closed cell really good for really good for tearing it up and using it for texture like texture chipping or like uh, texturing out some grime uh, you just tear off a little piece of that and uh, you know hold it between your alligator grip alligator clips and make a quick little sponge for texture easy as that so Upholstery foam sponge, some alligator clips for holding uh, parts, as well as creating a little sponge fuss for texture. A nice lint-free cloth, uh, you can cut that up into a few little strips, it'll help for wiping away the enamels. Um, I like to use the wood-handled Q-tips, they're a little stiffer on the surface. These are some uh, electronic foam cleaning pad swabs. I, I have the swabs listed on my Amazon list, I don't remember what they're called. And then I have some really tiny if you don't have, if you want to get some disposable brushes for like the gumbo markers, um, there's some really fine eyeliner or lip gloss. I think these are eyeliner applicators or lip gloss, at, lip lipstick applicators. I have them on my Amazon list, like I, like I said again, but these are nice because you can reuse these quite a bit. Uh, a little 99% alcohol for the Gundam markers or enamels, and it, you know. And then a uh, dentist, uh, these are the brushes that uh, you always get at the dentist for putting on, um, fluoride and stuff like that I, again I have them listed up there these are nice just to have a little if you just want a nice chemical brush to move things around uh, these are wood handle q-tips they're very fine um, use this for cleaning off scrubbing uh, chipping is what I usually use it to scrub or get into tight places and move product around because there's not a lot of cotton on there just enough um, again on my list Standard Q-tip and then just a downsized version of the uh, sponge on the plastic.
pre-coating of the uh, of the Starship wash. It probably could go in with a little bit heavier, uh, thicker oil base, but <clears throat> but I like I like the thinness of this just for the initial wash. Um, now I'm taking I'm making sure these parts are separated because the enamel thinner can cause some issues but right now what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to get a nice even coating over all the parts um, I'll darken up the internal parts as it dries or uh, when I when I um, when I put on a later a later coat but really this is just to get a kind of a pre layering in and I'll show you in a second what the results are be after it's dry and I might go to two uh, coats of this uh, that's why I like to do this while the parts are still on the runners because then I can do all the runners one night and then come in the next day and start building so this is a piece I already already uh, did a coat on in a white boy but I'm gonna add a little bit more back into it because I, I want a little bit more grime in there which is a nice and even thin coat over everything. May not look like it's doing that much, but it's definitely getting in there. Uh, you can let your uh, wash thicken up a little um, outside of the container. Uh, you know, leave it in the porcelain bowl, let it thicken up. Basically, let some of the uh, thinner flash off, and then you can. Uh, it'll be a little bit easier to coat the pieces but trust me it's getting in there it's doing its job just let the pieces sit and set and they will be good to go now I'm just coming in to add I'm not trying to do a full one on this but I just want to add a little bit more in the areas that I sand it off this would be the same idea with coming in with the black or the dark gray afterwards to really get that part going So really, I mean, it just shows you how much I'm putting on. It's just, it changes the whole thing. A lot of this will be buffed away. And since we're not, we're doing this right on the raw plastic, a lot of it can actually be rubbed off with your hand. It doesn't really require that much sandpaper uh, because we'll be sealing it in after the fact. Um, so this is kind of a nice, you have a lot of freedom here. Just make sure you don't put the enamel on this heavy when you have the parts. The parts are uh, when the parts are are connected. What was I trying to say? All right, let's see another one there. And again, this isn't. You should be careful with this. I mean, I am soaking it, but I'm also. It's not dripping off. It's enough to get in those dark reach areas. And I'm not really doing that much to the back. I'm leaving the back pretty free and open. I don't want things to pull. I want to pull on the surface. So the last one of this, and then I will just go ahead and build them all up. Hopefully, that'll get you enough. So at least for the enamel washes, as long as the parts are separated, like I said over and over again, uh, there shouldn't be that much of a trouble. If you are worried, I would just pick up a acrylic, an acrylic, and do the exact thing I'm doing here, but with an acrylic. So you find a green, green, green brown, and you can do the same things here with your acrylic, and the thinner for that should not damage your plastic at all. And neither will the enamel, it's just the thinners can cause some issues if you're not really ready for them and let it pool in uh, joints. The example of that would be what I'm doing right now. Uh, this will be your test example because I can't disassemble this, but I know that I have all the parts glued that I need glued here and I'm going in I have a fan going on with me zoom out a little bit more sorry about that and I have a fan going on here 
So I should, I should be safe because uh, the I'm not letting it drip down inside too much. I'm just using light taps, uh, and the fan is uh, blowing off quite a lot of it. Not really concerned about that. I'm just trying to get the gray parts that I know have a pool uh, divots. I'll come back in and get the rest of them later, but you know, get a nice, nice light. So I'm not really, I'm just getting a coating on this. Let me see if I can get better. Better hold on it. Uh, so yeah, again, I'm just light coats. I'm not letting it cool down and drip and the fan should blow it off pretty quick. Let's see what we can get in going on in there. Sometimes I just take a little bit of risk. Uh, I don't necessarily know if this is going to break part of it, um, but I have enough confidence in what I've done before to know if I'm, as long as I'm not soaking this so much that it's like pouring, like I'm wiping off my brush and I'm going back in. See, that was a little heavy. That's on the outside. Be a nice grimy, grimy wash to get something inside there. So yeah, so we got pretty much everything we needed out of this one. Let these dry up. See some of the previous. That's about, it's about half dry there. And then we'll let it dry all the way. So here I have, I've mixed up the wash. It's a little bit thicker uh, than normal. I've let it kind of air out a little. Um, and I've mixed up the container really well. So what I'm gonna first do is just with any of the pre-washes pre or stains, I'm just gonna coat everything. Give it a nice, you know, going over. No area um, missing. Now I'm not top coating these. If you'd like to do that beforehand, you may with a gloss. Um, I don't find, as long as the parts are separated and not under pressure, I haven't had issues with the plastic weakening. It has enough time for the thinner to flash off. And the thinner is the thing that really, um, that is going to deteriorate plastic, not the uh, oil paint um, and not the enamel. It's the thinner that causes the issue. So the longer the, the thinner sits and pools, the weaker the plastic. So if it sits inside of a joint, it's swelling, expanding it, the joint's under pressure, it's gonna crack. Having a piece out like this, not a big deal. So. Same idea, and I'm gonna do this for all the pieces, but I'm not gonna film all of it. Um, I'll come back in when I've got it all assembled. So what I'm gonna do is just this first, uh, first, what's the word of it? I'm already, the Starship Filth. So Starship Filth, uh, Starship Bay, um, uh, gunk wash over everything. And then I will come back in, assemble, glue, and then I'll start adding the details uh, but what I want to get right now is just a nice, even coating of the main, my main uh, uh, wash, my main grime layer over all the raw plastic that I know is going to expand. And then I'll come back in and we'll use the different, the different, uh, different enamel thinners and small areas with my small tool, uh, the small uh, ink, ink pen, and that will help emphasize these points. Like I'll put some dark browns in here, I'll put some blacks in. Uh, but the first first step I'm gonna use for all this is just, not the parts I've already done though, let's not mess those up. 
maybe just a little. We're going to come back and redo parts, make sure the clear parts and all the parts are disassembled with this. I'm doing such a light amount, I'm not worried. Uh, I just want to add a little bit more grime to these little panels in here and uh, should be safe as long as I am careful. Like everything, you know, should be. Famous last words, right? So, yeah, just that, you can see just that nice, you just want to get the nice grime in there, make sure all the deep parts are accounted for, and make sure all your parts are separated. Uh, the only time I've ever had an instance where these parts have broken on me and popped and cracked is when they're under pressure. So do not, do not attempt too much enamel washes like this, like this is a real soak. If you have parts combined, they will break. But parts separated, I still have yet to have an issue of weakening plastic if they are separate. So, basically what I was showing you here for the 502 oils, uh, this is another one that's like the green-gray color for the Starship Filth. You can use that too as just the oil across the whole thing. You're going to have to let it sit for a lot longer though to get it um, to get it all, all flashed off and uh, dry. Uh, enamels work a lot quicker. I would suggest enamels first. So, since we have that going, I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get going on the rest of these. Get going on the rest of these and see what we can get. that have dried up and uh, sorry all the parts that have flashed off from the enamel thinner and we're going to buff them back so we create our kind of pre-wash and our pre-liner now you're going to see a lot of this removed but it's going to keep in the deep areas and crevices you want so we're going to start first with just using q-tips and a little bit of odorless mineral spirits thinner but not very much mostly we're using a dry q-tip just to rub it off so you can see a lot of it removed but then here's an example uh, you can see this is with it mostly removed and we've already got so much nice grime and shading in there uh, as opposed to the gray that's on the other side let me get sorry there we go so you can already see just that little bit of grime we got going in there and that's from just a, a dry q-tip working back some of it so we got some pre-strike and we'll refine all this afterwards but this is your next goal after the after um after we coat all these from the previous, is to just bring them all down to about here. So we're using Q-tip and scrub it off. So I'm gonna show you some close-ups of that and then we will get to the rest of them pretty quickly. And then I'll move on to the next part. All right, so all of these have dried out and I'm going to uh, start scrubbing off a little bit of it. Um, I'll show you one that I did in advance. 
can see just with scrubbing it off. This one actually I was able to just buff the parts off without any root thinner. Um, that's what you're going to want to start with. It's just the dry cotton swab. Uh, if you want streaking, then get it a little bit wet, but just to be able to get that nice kind of worn in stainy surface. And you can see the difference between that and the original plastic on the back. See that gray, lifeless? And there, it's still got the gray, but it's got that kind of uh, lived in quality to it. And that's just with wiping off. That's just from going from, from there and then just wiping it down a little with the tissue. So I'll show you a little bit of that. Um, here, actually a good, better example right there. See, haven't wiped it off yet, and then wiped it off. And now I'm gonna use a little bit of my odorless mineral spirits in a little container like this. And I might use some of this brush as well. But for the first part, let's just stick with a mostly dry Q-tip. on this was so barely anything uh, this is mostly a dry uh, q-tip you see it starts to get a little bit torn up as you go the uh, q-tip and that's just flip over to the other side once it starts getting too torn because you don't want to get a bunch of stuff caught in there but you can already see so I've left the um, the lower grime in there and just take it off the tops of the panels it's really just doing a light wipe down, and we're already pretty much matching there. Now, this looks like it took a little bit too much off of these panels, so I'm just gonna get add a little bit in and uh, redo that one in a little bit. But just on those two panel parts, everything else looks good. Just want to make sure that's right. But that's a great thing is you take it off. You can come right back in again with some more. Um. stay and then don't be afraid of your, your uh, q-tip getting dirty uh, this will actually be very useful as you go through because then you can start bringing that streak over and start leaving the areas you want and start uh, moving it down but yeah I think I'll have to come back in with uh, another coat to get you know the exact uh, but this is the this is again this is the a good pre-line it's just it's getting our getting it it's leaving all the deep the deep parts nice and grimy and it's leaving a little bit of it on the surface but i want to get more of that later so i'll after this is dry i'll come back with just a streak and try to get these type of you know leaving some of it on there but just that kind of that brown green over the whole surface all right so you can see just from you know where we've taken it you still have a lot of that left in there you've got your line you got a couple streaks forming up there um, and you'll come back in and we can refine it with our brush and I 
gonna start moving pigments around and then uh, you know but this is just this is just to get the parts pre-grimed and looking kind of where we got where our base so I'm gonna do that to all these parts and then uh, we'll put it back together and see where we're at It's going to pick up less and less, which means you can move it around a lot more and still leave a nice kind of streaky grime surface on there. So that's kind of what you want to look for is, um, but when it gets too dirty, you're going to have to change out your Q-tip again. Um, but it's good to keep it handy nearby in case you want to re, like if you wipe off too much and you want to just get a little bit of a stain going back in there, that's where you want to bring back your dirty brush, uh, your dirty Q-tip, sorry. Uh, yeah, see this one, so it's not really taking too much weight, but it's leaving all the spots real nice. You want to keep the, the areas that's not going to wipe off easily with a Q-tip. It's kind of an area that stuff, that the dirt and grime would collect and create that nice shade and shadow. Uh, so the big flat surface areas aren't going to have as much, um, but anywhere that it pools like around pipes, stuff like this, it's going to be... So I'm just doing a little light streaks at this point, and I'm going to leave it like this for now. I'm going to take some of these big parts, uh, remove some of these bigger parts, but I want to keep as much of this cool color going on here. And I'll come back in and I'll do a, a last removal after I get the big chunks out. So, oop. So I'm just going to do a few of these without really talking too much, just so you can get a general idea of the different sizes and areas. But they all they all act the same way. You're kind of just uh, this one especially has got some really nice deep spots. So I'm going to leave most. It's just anywhere that's hitting that you want to take away kind of the high points and leave all this nice, really worked in shading and grime in the uh, the parts that it the actual deep areas where it would naturally sit. So you're letting the the part do the work for you if that makes sense uh, letting it show you where the deep spots are letting you show where the high spots are where the stuff's going to wipe off really easily and try not to work too hard to get down in those crevices we want to keep that area shaded and grimy so you just work around um, this one's get this brush is getting a little too dirty That's 
good spot to get it in the beginning. Again, you know, this is where we're going from and we're trying to get it to. So I've started a little bit on the Gundam markers. Uh, this was just a test. I'll do some footage of up close, but I just wanted to kind of see where the colors would land, which which would work good: the silver, the uh, the, the plated color, the um the plated silver, the gold, reds, blues, greens, etc. Uh, I just wanted to do a little test here because a lot of these you just wipe them back down with 99% alcohol if you don't like the way they were going. But and I think I was happy how this is turning out so I'm gonna go and hit all the other ones up and I'll show you the application but in general all I've been doing is I just pick out certain spots so when I get it fully assembled um, I'll just look for spots like these tubes that might need to be enhanced a little bit and just kind of just kind of guess like what's the color what's gonna look good so the next one I'm gonna go over I'm gonna go over this one because there's a few little fun spots right there that we can enhance because it'll look so much nicer when they go under there, under that piece. So it's kind of like what I usually do when it comes to this, when it comes to this on a real grade and or what we're doing right now with the raw plastics, I, I take a look at the detail and then I look at the piece that's gonna be going over it. Like, okay, so the only parts that show up are these top parts and a little bit of that, but then everything else is kind of hidden back under there. So what do I want to enhance? So I probably want to focus on the center one less and do more color on the outside. So maybe I'll do the red, um, maybe red with gold inside and then silver for the pipes. And then maybe some a green or a blue or some weird color for the little cylinders there. So we'll see what we get. That's what I'm going to show you next close up. The ones I like the best are these sets right here. Now I am trying out the new the chrome plate, the crow, the I'm sorry, not chrome plating, but the plated silver. That'd be the right there. Now, compared to Molotov, I haven't tried it enough yet to really know the difference, but it seems like it's pretty much right there. So this is a really good chrome marker. Alcohol base dries quick, and then I like to use the EX, the red, red metallic. Uh, take a little bit to shake it up. Make sure you get it nice and shaken up. Also, which I really like. And then the blue, metallic blue again. A lot I just deal in the metallics. I might grab some of the grays and some of the others. This is my favorite gold. Um, make sure you get the nose on there. I use this gold for everything. It dries so quick, looks so nice. So I'm going to use the uh, just the that, that little tiny disposable brush that I showed you before. Um, what it is, I've poured out just a little bit more than I should have, but I got a little bit out on the uh, paper palette. Here, let me zoom out, show you. So I got my paper palette there, and uh, just makes it a little bit easier to get uh, the tinier details. I like to still use the marker, but with these you can still wipe them off. I just like the disposal one as opposed to a brush because it's a little bit smaller. And you can just clean them with 
alcohol. This is really the general thing of what I do. I, I just find a color that looks cool, like maybe the red works there. And I think it does. It all depends on what I'm gonna add later. I'll show you the actual pen application and kind of how you have to float it. But I just wanna keep red right there in the center. So let me copy that really quick on the other side because I don't know how much more red I'm gonna use on this. Um, it overused quite a bit, came out of the, out of the, uh, pen I, it's hard be careful with um, when you use, when you push down the pen on a palette to uh, take out to uh, decant some of the color you might get more than you want um, some of these pens are a little bit they're loose at the front like they want to bleed more Oops, so there's an example right there now we can always solve that so there's an example of when too much there was too much paint on the brush see how it bled down into the cracks there after this is dry you can just hit that with some black uh you know cameo liner no problem that'll clear it right away uh, you won't really see it but that's one of the things one of the risks you take you got to be just careful so like that one i used just the right amount use small amounts the second one i got a little blob on there that found its way off to the side and again what i'll do is i'll clean with uh, i'll clean the brush off between uses with that and I can reuse it quite a bit for separate colors. Um, let's see, let's get some of the gold. Put that one on the way. So I have just the gold out and I'm trying to use the sharp chisel side of it. And only, let's see, what are we what are we doing with oh yeah, let's let's just do and so just starting at the top, with a hair, and then I'm just, I'm just gonna try a little bit of hair stuck on the brush, on the goal, on the marker. There we go. And so we're just trying to, I'm not trying to flood it, I'm just lightly tapping it on the top. Light strokes. Now you can get a tiny brush and decant it the same way and do all the, all your work with the Gundam markers on a brush off a palette. But sometimes it's fine. Just you have to be real. Don't don't flood it. Don't worry about bleeding. Just um, try to use the thinnest side of your marker, and you'll end up with you know something like this. Now it's not a perfect masked off application. Uh, you could mask all these if you want, and then you know mark it up with the Gundam marker. Um, I think for this, I don't mind it being a little rough. I think when it comes all together the piece will have the emphasis where it needs to be because these are just little light details. All right, so now we're moving into the, the actual silver chrome. So this is their, uh, the, the, the Bandai or uh, Gundam marker, not Bandai. Um, this is their answer to the Molotov chrome. I think it's good. Maltov still is ahead in the type of pen tip. Once they put this in the small precision tip one, though, I think um, it's going to beat them out because there's no there's no way they're going to be able to survive against um, the Bandai machine. Let's see. Maybe I'll put a little bit right in there. That one too. It's kind of hard. You got to make sure you're using just the tip. And you're gonna let it. You're gonna want to let it flood just a little bit to be able to create that nice chrome surface. If it doesn't have enough product on there to kind of self-level, you're gonna not get as shiny a surface um, as you would normally get from like a spray-down lacquer. So so far, that's what we got. Um, yeah, let's see. Should I do red? Ah, let's do blue. Might be too much. Let me think about this for a second. I do green, just because you know. Maybe it's too Christmassy, but I like it. I 
if I don't end up liking it after, I can just take it off or tone it down. But yeah, I don't like it. All right, so I'm gonna take that off. out especially if it's tarnished a little later and after they're all dry you can always go over in a different color um, into if you don't want to wipe them off the more dominant whatever the color that's on top is going to be the dominant color and I'll fix that but you can kind of see just the beginnings of of it taking shape right there then after all this, hitting it with another little enamel wash to deepen up the like, this is where I'd bring back in the black to really pop those areas. Uh, but really, I mean, that's most of the application for my detail stuff. So I'll just be looking for spots like that throughout. Uh, another good example is right here through all these areas. Probably use the silver through there, maybe hit it with a little bit of red, but I don't want to go too extreme on the externals, uh, just for I mean, maybe some of the red, maybe some of the blue, but I'll stick mainly with the gold and chromes, because I can hit those with some wash and get them all dirty. I mean, much like that. Like, see, so you see there's just that one little bit of blue right down to the bottom, and the rest is just the silver and gold. Let's take a little look. I'm facing the right direction on this. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's, where's the other? Let's see what it looks like without anything. So you can see the little bit, of, I mean, it's up, up to you how you wanna see things, but I think having that little bit of color in there, uh, even though it will be toned down a little bit with the flat coat or the uh, uh, wash after, I think that looks a little bit more interesting having just that little bit of color in there instead of everything be gray. I mean, that's what I like about uh, for the real braids is those little parts. Most of the frame coming through is all gray. It's like, what if you hit it with some green? What if you hit it with some gold? So the cooler, maybe, who knows? Up to you but I'm just here to show what I like to do. I'm gonna get to the rest of these. Might fill some of them, but for the most part, I'm just gonna get it together so I can finally assemble it back into here. And I will show you this real quick because I've done a little bit in the back. so. Uh, I just decided to paint that in blue so it'd have a little bit more shine and reflect uh, with the metallics. And I've added the reds you see right there, a little bit of gold, and pretty much that's it back here. Not a big extreme amount, but there's, there's little bits in there I gotta deal with. I wanna just have some of those pipes and gold, and I'm gonna put some soot and black here using some of the Tamiya powder. But gotta get all this assembled back so that I can start painting it. So here it is assembled with a little bit of detail work. Uh, this is just after the washes from the previous portion of the video. I'm gonna, now I'm gonna go in and do all the actual detail work with it fully assembled. But I wanna just show you a little bit of it right now without, just with the wash going through all the parts and you just see all the details just popped right out there.
this is just one color enamel wash, the Starship wash from MIG. Um, and then, let's see, one, two, three, four, let's see, four, four to five uh, Gundam markers for details afterwards. So, just just showing you what, you know, you've seen in the, in the previous video, or in the uh, video when I was wiping off the uh, wash, how you can get that really interesting look on just plastic. Again, this is raw plastic. There, I didn't paint, I used paint anything here. These are all just the colors that came with the kit. You know, the red brown, the two different tones of gray, three different tones of gray actually. I think there's the darker one. I can't recall where it is right now. It's probably the internals. Um, and just adding those details to pop it. So this was just another one of my experiments on what's the least amount of paint you can do. And now with this one again, like I said from the beginning, I you like to do all this panel work and all the grime work when they're still on the runners. When you do enamel work on something that's assembled, that's when you run into problems with parts breaking. Now I'm going to show you that right here because I assembled a part then I had to come back in with liner and I ended up cracking it. But everything beforehand, because this piece was under pressure right here, but before everything, all these pieces separate, not one single problem with uh, cracking or chipping or breaking. If all these parts are assembled separate, loose uh, parts, not under pressure, the enamel will be fine on them. When they, once the moment you put them under pressure, then drop some of the thinner on it, then that's when you get into trouble with the cracks. All these other parts have no issues whatsoever when I snapped them back together because I did the enamel off the, uh, uh, when they weren't assembled. So that's the one thing I can just caution you every time. When using this, do them off the, do the enamels off the non-assembled. But I think it turned out all right. You know, let me know. Uh, this is gonna be, this is a pretty long video, so I do thank you for looking through it, but uh, I'm sure you just jumped through on the chapters. A lot of stuff getting covered in this one. Uh, all right, now for a little close up of that final. I mean, I had a, a few of the videos out there. I'm just going to do a few little handheld close ups, show you what I ended up doing. So, you already saw this. Uh, this was just the plated silver, some of the chrome, chrome. And actually the copper color you see here is I mixed some of the metallic red and the gold together. Just a little bit of the red and mostly the gold and create a little nice copper tone in there. So if you want to do that, mixing that on the side is something you can do. Now, I didn't go in for a sec, a second wash after this. I kind of like how bright some of the components show up. So I wanted to just keep it like that. Now I might down the road come back in and hand paint a few more details as I go, but right now I just want to keep it just that little bit so you barely see anything. A little 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 thing, little teases um, throughout. Maybe little small windows, little small power boxes. It's hard to understand the scale on this because it is supposed to be, it's, it's a fan fantasy ship. But you know, at one three thousandth scale, it's kind of hard to, that's why I didn't end up doing any chipping because I'm like, I can't, that'd be a really big chip. That'd be like a, you know, a, almost a, a couple cars lengths, so like a buses, and like I can't figure out the scale on that. And so yeah, because I didn't, because I uh, busted the LED in the back and I don't get any glow, I used some of the metallic blue back there to kind of give it a nice glow all the time. And then I added some more details in there. So when these are closed down, you just see that nice little, hint of what's going on in back there, which I always like. Uh, yeah, same on this side. Just... So I guess the, I mean, the biggest, what I liked best out of everything throughout this whole build is just how all the parts separated. You saw when I took them apart, how big the sections are. Make sure you put them back in the right order too, because there are some parts that lip under each under themselves, but it's just such a nice design. It's so unique to have something like this on your shelf and have it built. It's really easy, especially if you're building, if you're painting and uh, assembling everything before, I'm uh, sorry, painting, lining, you know, doing all your decal work. Uh, although I don't really know what kind of decals you're gonna put on here at this scale, but 
Uh, if you do all that work beforehand, before assembly, you should be fine. Because uh, again, the first time assembly was great going through, no, no problems with LEDs. But as I've had to open it and close it, take it apart, take it apart, it got a little weak. But again, very unique design. Not a lot of people, I mean, it, it is, it's exactly what it is. It's an airbrush spaceship and that's very cool. Just a first, just a little bit there just to tell you. So I got everything else, everything else still lights up through here. So all the LEDs function up through here. And what I did is I broke basically the piece that's here, the little small connector, it just snapped off on me. So I had broken here and then I eventually broke here, which means this whole back section doesn't light up anymore. And uh, that's no real, I don't think that's too much of a fault on the manufacturer. I think if I'm gonna say anything down though, is the LEDs might need to be reworked again, just in some of those connector spots. Cause where you have to plug them in, it's such a tight spot to get them in. I mean, there's there's gonna be, like it's gonna be a misaligned and it kept flexing and then it broke off. So even with tweezers and patience, it, it was hard for me to get some of the plugs back in. Now I had to disassemble this fully. So the first assembly in, everything worked fine. Um, it just got a little trouble when I had to disassemble, reassemble it again. So uh, most, I, I mean, I, I definitely think I was a little bit um, rough with the parts, but I don't think I was that rough with them. So I think the only the only thing I'm seeing as an issue at the final final build after separating it a second time. Uh, is the LEDs were a little bit tricky to get back in and then I end up breaking it more. So like I said, everything still works up here. Power through there, all that lights up, but I definitely don't have functionality through there and there. So I might be able to fix that down the road, but don't think so at the moment. So that's really the only last little final flaw I think out of everything. When I've built this, all the other parts, everything else fits really good together. All the separation is so nice. It's just the LED system inside just could use um, a little bit of reworking but that that's a cost issue and I, I don't think that's fair to say that needs a working issue I think it's great great that it's in there just be careful with the LEDs when you install them okay